Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. In this video, we're going to start to talk about airplanes a little bit. If you've been to my website, you know I have a fairly healthy, I'll call it healthy, obsession with airplanes. Well, I've been thinking about various designs for RC models and full scales, of course, over the year. Never really had the time to build anything. This last week, I finally got fed up, and I wanted to see one of my designs. Uh, the problem I was trying to solve is this. With a typical airplane setup where you have the wing up front and a tail in back, you have a pitching down moment that's caused by the wing. That's just a natural side effect of the wings. So the purpose of the tail then is to counteract this pitching moment. And what the tail has to do is supply negative lift to essentially, I mean the whole thing's trying to tilt this way, so you've got to push down back on the tail to keep your airplane flying level. Well that's great and all. The problem is, the wing then also has to overcome the negative lift from the tail. And unfortunately, when you generate lift, you generate induced drag. And drag is bad, lift is good. So I thought, well, maybe there's got to be a better way to do this. About ten years ago, I came up with something like this. The idea was to eliminate the horizontal tail. Uh, common practice, not too common, was of course to start loading commercial airliners a little bit aft to their CG so that it would reduce the uh, tails moment and therefore it was more efficient flight. You could save a lot of fuel that way. Well, what if we just increase the lifting surfaces and eliminate that altogether? So I thought, well, let's have two wings. We'll join them out here. I went ahead and joined them because if they're you know, going to flutter or anything, this way they'll at least do it together. So what you've got is a low wing up front and a high wing in back that sweep and connect in what has essentially been an end plate at the wingtips. And this here is really critical because it's common practice nowadays to use wingtip fences or uh, winglets to stop the wingtip vortices that occur at each end because of the lift you're generating. Well, if you've got a giant plate that's connecting both of your wingtips, it should be nearly impossible for any of the high pressure air under the wings to curl around to the top uh, low pressure air. So I would like to investigate that. But the whole idea here was to make airplanes more efficient. You don't have the problem of people sitting way off of the axis of rotation so they you know, wouldn't get as sick if this were you know, a passenger airliner. Now of course this thing would probably highly fly by wire and computerized and you could possibly eliminate the entire tail as well if you were to put rudders or drag brakes or something on these wingtip fences out here. But, that's something I intend to investigate. So I got tired of just sketching designs, and this week I finally built something. Let me show you what I got. So this is what I came up with. Now obviously this is just my prototype. I did it for manufacturing simplicity. It doesn't have any sort of fancy tapers or anything like that. But so far the initial uh, short distance glide tests are promising. So. I've got my low wing, my high wing. I have no taper on my wings. Obviously that wouldn't fly normally. I don't have tapered fuselage and I just have a paper nose cone. Inside here I've got uh, my three servos and receiver and battery pack. At the moment this is just a glider. I plan to get uh, a Park 480 motor, stick it up front and actually see how this thing will behave and then tailor it accordingly. Because it is made out of cardboard it's really easy to change things. I love prototyping stuff in cardboard, as you know, so that's just a natural progression for me. So what I've got here, uh, just to test proof of concept, are I've got a set of elevons, which are ailerons and elevators combined. I do have a, a standard rudder, because I don't have any computer control or anything like that, and I didn't want to run control rods or servos all the way out to these wingtip fences. The only issue I foresee with this, really, uh, based on the glide test is lack of roll control because my elevons are inboard. Normally when you do ailerons you stick them way out here so you have more torque. Uh, I didn't really have any way to do that and keep it steady and it was harder to do and since this is just a proof of concept inboard should be just fine. As long as I can see basic control I'll go ahead then and make a more robust version out of foam and cardboard and then eventually wood. Make a full scale maybe nitro version. But so my sides and bottom of the fuselage are just glued together, two inch wide pieces of cardboard. My wings are three inches in cord. They are 15 degree sweep and they are 20, 
two and a half inches long. The top section of the fuselage here is just slotted in. It just sits in there to cover things up. And then my nice paper nose cone helps uh, keep the air out of the inside and keeps the top from blowing off. So I'm excited to go test this, but it's been raining and foggy all week and cardboard doesn't do too well in the rain, but I'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.